Hi, this is for my students who are doing the rabbit hunt project. I want to show you how to do three simple things. I want to show you how you can move in a particular direction, how you can move in a random direction, oh, I guess four things, how you can check to see if you're trying to move into something where you can't, like you're trying to move into an edge or a bush, and I want to try to show you how you can look in a particular direction to see what's there. So that, that way you can check for the fox and do something else if you see the fox. Okay, how do you move in particular directions? Uh, here we are inside the rabbit class. Decide move is the method that gets called automatically every single step. And whatever gets returned is what the direction that the rabbit's going to move. So there's a bunch of predefined constants here. Field.n is north. So this program is going to have the rabbit just go north every single time. Um, if I did dot .s, that's south, dot .e is east, dot .w is west, dot .se is southeast, dot .sw is southwest, ne is northeast, and w is northwest. Um, so this will make the rabbit go in just one particular direction. How do we make it go in random directions? Well, you can make a random number, and depending on what the number is, you can have it choose a direction. So I could say int choice equals... You can see my random number generator up here is called r, so I'll say r.nextint. Uh, let's do 3. So this is a number between 0 and 2. So then I could say if choice is 0, then let's return field.north. So we'll go north. Otherwise, if choice is 1, we'll return field.northeast. <coughs> Otherwise, if choice is 2, we'll return field dot, who knows, west. Could be anything. Okay, here's what I want you to notice. <clears throat> I have three if statements here, and decide move uh, has a compile time error, and it says this method must return a result of type int. <clears throat> the reason that it's saying that is because it's not smart enough to know that choice has to be one of these three values. So the computer's imagining maybe all three of these if statements will be false, and then it will be out here in the program, and it won't know what to do anymore. So the way to fix this kind of problem is just make sure you have a default value. So I could delete this last if statement, and so now if the number was 0, I'll go north. If the number was 1, I'll go northeast. Otherwise, I'll go west by default. Okay, if you wanted to move randomly in any one of the eight directions, you could just have eight if statements like this. There's an easier way to do this, though. <coughs> um, each of these constants is actually an integer. So field.north is actually 0. Field.northeast is actually 1. Field.east uh, is actually 2, and so on. And once you get all the way around all of the possible directions, um, the last direction, field.northwest, is 7. So as long as you... So if I wanted to go north, I could say return field.north. Or I could also say return 0, because that means the same thing. Uh, field.north is easier to read, because you know what that means. And 0, you would have to remember what it means. But the nice part is, it means we don't actually need all those if statements. Let's go back to the if statements. Instead of generating a random number and saying, if choice equals 0, return field.north, that's silly, because field.north is actually 0. So we're just saying, if choice equals 0, return 0. That's goofy. We should really just be returning what the choice is. So a much shorter way to do this is we'll just say, return r.nextint 8. This is a random number between 0 and 7. <coughs> And so that means we know it's one of the possible directions we could move in. So if we just return this number directly, that will move us in a random direction. Okay. Let's talk about how you can check to see if you're allowed to move in a particular direction. I'm going to declare an integer. That's my random direction. <clears throat> uh, 
And now I want to check if I can move in that direction. There's a method called can move, which returns true or false when you give it a direction as input. So here as input, this would check to see can I move to the north? Is it free? And it would return false if there was a bush or if I was against the edge in the north direction. A can move field.south checks to the south to see if I could move south. Well, in this case, I've chosen a random number that I've saved into DIR, um, and that's the direction I want to move in. What direction is it? I don't know. It was random. But it doesn't matter because that's still a direction. I can still take the number that's the direction I'm trying to move in and ask the can move method. Could I move in this direction? So if I can move in that direction, let's return the direction. <clears throat> if I can't move in that direction, maybe I should return a different one. So I'll have another random integer. So now this program chooses a random direction, sees if I could move in that direction. If I can, it does that. If it can't, then I generate a new random direction and I move there. <clears throat> All right, let's talk about how you can check to see in a particular direction if an object's there. So there's a command called get object in direction, where you give it a direction, and what it returns is an integer that represents what are we seeing in that direction. So thing is an integer, but it's an integer that's a special code for a particular type of object. So thing could be a fox, or it could be a bush, or it could be the edge of the field. And the way that you check is using predefined constants, the same as field.north and field.east. So I want to check to see if thing equals field.fox. So this is checking, this is saying, look to the north and save what's there into thing. Now tell me if thing is a fox. If I want to see if there is a bush to the north, I can say bush. If I wanted to see if there was a bush to the east, I would have to tell it to look east and then check if it's a bush. This checks to see if there's a fox to the east. Um, so you can put that together with the other code that I've shown you in order to choose a direction and look to see if the fox is in that direction. You could also, if you wanted to, check in all the directions. So I could say something like this. Yeah, um, let's do something like this. I'm going to check to the north, and then I say if thing equals field.fox, then I know there's a fox to the north. Let's say there's no fox to the north. Then I could copy and paste this and look to the northeast. And then, so now there would be a fox to the northeast. And then I could keep copying and pasting. So now I would look just to the east. <clears throat> so you could have eight if statements, and each one looks in a particular direction and then checks to see if the thing that we saw was a fox. And then inside here, you could have it move in an appropriate way to avoid the fox. This is bad code design. Um, generally speaking, you don't want to, oh, you might be wondering why it's red. It's red just because I'm redefining these integers. It's bad code design to copy and paste your code a lot. Because the idea is, this is like a basic this is like a basic function that we want to do all the time. We want to look in a particular direction and say, is there a fox there? So whenever you notice that there's a basic function that you want to do all the time, you should make your own command that does that function. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Uh, I'm going to say public something. Um, I, what is this thing doing? It's checking for a fox. So I'm going to call it is fox. Is there a fox? And then it takes a direction as an input. So I want to give it a direction as an input, and it's going to tell me yes or no. Is there a fox in that direction? So that means the return type must be boolean. OK, I've already written the code to do that. It's this thing I'm copying and pasting up here. So I'm going to paste it right in here. Only now. If I'm going to get object in direction, I don't want to look east. I want to look at whatever direction is the input to my command here. So direction. So I'm going to look at whatever direction 
this command is telling me to look in. I want to check if there's a fox. If there is a fox, I want to return true. Otherwise, I want to return false. <laughs> so now that I've written this command, I'm going to collapse it here. I can forget how it works inside. I don't care how it works inside anymore. Now I can use this just like any other basic command in my system. Now I have a way of checking, is there a fox in a particular direction? So instead of having all this code, I can just say, if is there a fox to the field dot north, then I can do something. And now I can say, if is there a fox to the northeast, then I can do something. So you see, this makes the code much shorter and much more readable. So you should definitely think about creating your own commands. I think another good command to create would be get random direction. It doesn't need any input. It will just return a random direction whenever I use it. I think another good command might be um, calculate opposite direction, which takes a direction as input, and it returns the opposite direction. Because uh, if I have all these three methods, I didn't actually make them. I didn't make the insides, but let's pretend I had made the insides. Then I can say, if there's a fox to the north, then return... Oh, well, I guess we know where the south is. So we don't need it yet. We could just say return field.south. If there's a fox north, go the other way. If there's a fox to the northeast, then return field.southeast. <clears throat> Oops. So you could still make eight different if statements that check in the eight possible directions. Let me show you another improvement. Remember that I said all the directions are zero all, are the numbers from zero to seven? That means that I can make a loop. Instead of having an if statement for each separate direction, I can say for direction starts at zero, which is north, keep going as long as the direction is less than or equal to seven, and add one every time. So now the first time through the loop, the direction is zero, which is north. The second time through the loop, the direction is one, which is northeast. The third time through the loop, the direction is two, which is east. So this is looping through every possible direction. Now I can say, if is there a fox in direction, because remember, direction starts at zero, then goes to one, then goes to two, so this is actually going to check all the directions. So if there's a fox in any direction, then, hmm, well where should I go? I can't say east or south, because the whole issue is what's the direction that I was facing in. So I need a way of calculating what's the opposite direction from a particular direction. So that's what this command is going to be for. So I can say calculate opposite direction from whatever direction I'm facing in. So let's imagine. Let's say, let's say direction is 2. So we've gone through the loop uh, twice already. So now this number direction is 2 which is east. So we say, is there a fox pointed at direction? And the answer is yes. We want to go to the west. So we want, so this direction is actually secretly the number two. So calculate opposite direction. We pass two into it as an input. And so what it should do is it should take that number two and figure out what number is going to take me west. And it should return that number. You might also, so now this chunk of code right here looks in all directions for a fox. Um, after you look for a fox, if there's no fox, we still have to decide what to do. So maybe I'll return field.stay, which is how you don't move at all. If you wanted to, you could have another loop that looks in all directions for bushes and maybe runs toward a bush or maybe runs away from a bush. In any case, you can see that uh, there's some pretty powerful commands here already, and you can make your code much shorter and much easier to read by creating your own commands. Good luck!